Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Doyle. This is the Rare Degree Table, and in this video, we are talking about a level zero adventure that is a discovery engine that points characters to their best suited class, which is determined by their choices as well as their successes and failures as they go through the course of what, in a sense, becomes their origin story. This is Mystic Dragon Games Forged in Shadows. Now, full disclosure, Michael and Kim reached out to offer me this review copy and were also kind enough to include their awesome Mobius deck of wonders as well. Look at this thing, it's, ooh, it's beautiful. We'll talk about this too. But this is not a sponsored video. I haven't been paid by anyone, except my patrons. Hop on over to Patreon to support the channel and get a growing amount of pretty awesome stuff to spice up your home game. Thank you for this new microphone patrons anyway. All that is to say the opinions in this video are entirely my own. And the first opinion I had was this is an awesome idea and I'd like to use whatever small influence I have to help support small independent publishers. So let's dive into Forged in Shadows. There are actually two things to unpack in this book. The first is the system for creating classless level zero characters and forging them into level one characters in the system you are looking to play next. Pathfinder, D&D, &D, and OSR, or a narrative first game, whatever really, as long as it's fantasy. The second part is the adventure itself, which is built specifically to create opportunities for the characters to move towards or bounce off of the standard class tropes and categories you're going to find in most games. Personally, I fell in love with the system and focused in on it so much that I actually ended up underestimating the adventure. The system in Forged in Shadows is a D100 roll under system. And if you've only really experienced D20 roll over, like in the later editions of D&D and Pathfinder, wrapping your head around this may kind of help you see through the matrix. I know we're all different levels of math minded, but viewing the core numbers of whatever game you're playing in terms of percentages can really unlock your understanding, whether you are tinkering with home homebrew stuff, or just making calls on the fly. Also, for me at least, knowing that increasing the modifiers you add to help you get over a bar, or target DC, acts the same as raising that bar when you were trying to go under it, helps to stretch out the perspective a bit. It's like realizing that the high jump and the limbo aren't all that different in the end. It's the same pole, you're just playing different music. This kind of perspective is also gonna help players building characters in different systems. Even experienced players can get bogged down in calculating ability scores and deriving modifiers from them, especially if they've been using something like D&D Beyond or Path Builder or whatever to do a lot of the work for them. But if you're looking to broaden your group's game horizons, this is a great way to do it. And you can take these characters nearly anywhere because they just have an ancestry and a background. Which brings me to my favorite part of Forged in Shadows, probably the backgrounds. There are 100 clever, flavorful options here that will slot into any medieval fantasy world. Each comes with a few associated skills and a piece of equipment. On their own, these backgrounds are enough to spark an interesting character concept. I had each of my players make two D100 rolls to give them their options. Nick got Furrier or Toy Maker, Tim pulled Fortune Teller or Locksmith, Stefan was choosing between an Illuminator, an Illustrator, of illuminated manuscripts and a tattoo artist, so maybe Stefan won, <laughs> but Bill got Siege Operator and Carpenter, and fun story, Bill is actually a union carpenter, so he just had to go human and essentially ended up building himself. I really love this idea of starting with something flavorful but down to earth and building up to achieving a class. Progression is a core part of role-playing games, but so often you go from nobodies to gods in a few weeks of game time and starting off as like a thimble rigger or a fishmonger or a falconer or glass blower can extend that arc a bit. Plus it's just cool. It also potentially solves the problem you see sometimes of a first level character with a crazy elevated backstory. I am the long lost heir of the kingdom who slayed an ancient dragon and carries the epic sword of destiny and nope, you're a street sweeper, buddy. You better build up your skills before you face any kind of dragon. And the epic sword of destiny isn't something you can just have. It's at the bottom of the dungeon that I've been working on for months. We are starting at the beginning here. And that is just what the rest of the book provides, an adventure to take these mundane level zero characters and set them on the path to becoming heroes. 
I'm going to avoid spoilers here as best I can, but the characters start out at a festival in the city of Valkaldur and accidentally get swept up in a web of magic and mystery that will require them to journey around the city, visiting different locations, talking to a bunch of different NPCs to unravel the truth of what exactly is going on here. And as they connect with different types of people and organizations, testing a broadly recognizable set of skills as they go, the players are going to be recording their successes and failures. And at the end, they're going to have a roadmap to their class selection, which was generated through playing this adventure. Plus, they will have a shared backstory explaining it all. What happens in the Cathedral of the Gods could send one PC on the path to becoming a cleric or a paladin. Whilst someone with the accolade background might have a slight advantage in those tests, there's nothing saying that anyone could thrive or fall flat. One night, the gravedigger might ace a performance check and unlock their true calling as a bard, or the chimney sweep could totally botch the heist and decide that the rogue's path is maybe not for them. And now we get to the problem that I had with Forged and Shadows, and the fault is mine, not the adventures. For some reason, I thought this was a one-shot, and I blocked out a couple weeks to get through it with my group, since we generally play shorter sessions sessions than most tables, and I wanted to leave room for character creation and questions, but I had made an assumption along the way, and you know what they say about assumptions. I think it was that I was so enamored with the system and going through the different backgrounds, I didn't realize that there is a lot of adventure packed into that little book. It is practically a mini campaign in a well-developed urban sandbox point crawl. There's about 50 pages dedicated to the adventure in there, and that's the same as the Lost Mine of Vandelver, pretty much. I don't think this would take nearly as long as the adventure from the 5e starter set, but uh, one shot it is not. You are going to have to do some solid prep here. There are 25 fleshed out NPCs with solid GM advice on what they want and how to run them, and they're all in different locations and can contribute different clues and components to solving the mystery of this adventure. This is is all exploration and social interaction with next to no combat, and that makes sense to me for a level zero adventure. And you can also address some issues for tables that have been, let's say, too eager to default to combat in every situation. Encouraging new and experienced players to lean into role play and creative problem solving, not just seeing every situation through the lens of damage and hit points, can be a fantastic way to set the tone for a new campaign with a batch of new characters or just offer a change of pace for some groups. If your table is already engaging with the other pillars of play, treating NPCs as real people, and reaching for their weapons only as a last resort, then they will doubly enjoy this adventure. Now, I know I said no spoilers, so without getting too deep into the story, somewhere along the way of exploring this city and solving the central mystery, one way or another, the player characters are likely to come across Mobius Spin, the powerful dwarven wizard. And not only will he drive the story and potentially set some of the characters on their path to being arcane casters, he will also share one of the items from his deck of wonders. Look at this thing. Look at the gilded edge. Look at these illustrations. Now, you don't need this to run Forged in Shadows. In fact, it's also kind of Mobius's origin story or prequel, and he has not completed crafting all of the magic items in here yet, but it is really beautiful and a great addition to any Game Master's kit. I'm going to put a bunch of this artwork on the screen. It is great, and that's all there is on the card, so you can make your own magic items out of these if you want it. Not that you have to. There are a variety of fun and clever descriptions and mechanics in here, but maybe you want an image of the magical MacGuffin at the heart of your homebrew campaign, or you need something particular to drop from that next monster. I could see building a whole campaign out of chasing these cards around the multiverse, since every time you pull a card, the rest of the deck teleports somewhere else. And that seems like a great potential follow-up to Forged in Shadows. Your players are going to come out of this adventure with developed and interconnected characters that have story-based reasons for taking on their level one classes. They will also have connections with a host of different NPCs in different locations around this well-developed city, most of whom are part of a powerful, secretive organization. We didn't even get into the Enlightened. Check out this org chart. There's 
a ton of value in this little book. And while the players are coming out with a ton of ideas for characters, I bet the Game Master has an equal number of homebrew ideas to continue the adventure from here. In fact, I really hope the fine folks at Mystic Dragon Games revisit Val Kaldur and cook up a follow-up adventure one day. I know they are actually in the midst of working on something else right now, and while it's a little too early to be talking about it, I am very excited about what's coming next from them. If it has the same heart and artistry that went into Forged and Shadows and the Mobius Deck of Wonders, I think we're in for something awesome. Maybe we'll talk about it when it comes out. In the meantime, I'm putting a link below where you can check out the free player's guide and the free game master's guide to Forged in Shadows to get an even deeper look at this system and adventure. You can also pick up the full 80 plus page book in print and PDF and the Deck of Wonders and some other cool stuff on there as well. If you'd like to support this channel, there's also links down there to my adventures and tables on Dungeon Master's Guild, a growing amount of magic items, and some other cool stuff on the way on DriveThruRPG, and the link to my Patreon and Discord. If you want to take a look at some other ways to make better characters for whatever system you end up playing them in, maybe check out this video. If you want some upcoming options beyond D&D to run them in, right? Perhaps as a follow-up to Forged and Shadows, check this out. Thanks so much for watching this one through. Be kind, have fun, and I'll see you next time.